Hey guys, what's up? My name is Evan Schneider, and today in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys around the new DaVinci Resolve 14. This tutorial is meant to be a fast and easy way for you to get started on your project as soon as possible. So for more in-depth tutorials, subscribe to my YouTube page. Let's get started. All right, so let's get started by launching Resolve. So the first thing you're gonna see when you launch Resolve is the project manager. This is where all of your projects will be stored. So I'm gonna create a new project and I'm gonna call it Resolve 14 Tutorial. Hit create and you'll be taken into the project. Now Resolve opens your new project on the edit page, but we're actually gonna start on the media tab. DaVinci Resolve 14 is separated into five different sections. You have your media page where you handle all of your media management, your edit page where you can edit your film and make sure it matches your offline, your color tab where you can color your film, Fairlight where you can work extensively with audio, and your deliver tab where you can export your videos. So let's start in the media tab. To import clips into the media pool, I'm going to find them in the file browser up here. So I will go to here find my footage. Once you're in your directory with your footage, you can select multiple clips by holding down command. And then you can drag your clips into the media pool by this. It's going to ask me if I want to change my frame rate to the current clip settings, so I'll go ahead and do that. Now that I have my media in my media pool and I want to create a timeline, I can just go straight to the edit page. Then to create a new timeline, you simply take a clip and drag it into the timeline. Your timeline will be automatically created in your media pool. Now to keep things organized, I'm actually going to create bins. So I'll right click, click add bin, and I'm going to make a bin for timelines. And then I'm also going to create a bin for footage. Now I can drag my timeline to the timeline bin and select all my footage and put it in the footage bin. Now everything is nice and organized. If I want to add footage to my timeline, I can double click it and bring it up in the viewer window. Select the range I want by clicking I for in and O for out and then dragging from anywhere in the viewer down into my timeline. I can also only grab the video by clicking here and dragging, or I can just grab the audio from the clip and drag here. If I want to change the size of the clip, I can highlight it, and in my inspector tab, I can go to zoom and zoom into my clip. And let's say you edited your project in Adobe Premiere or Final Cut X. What you can do is export an XML from either of those programs and then import that into Resolve. So I'm actually going to delete all of these clips and I'm going to go to File, Import AAF, EDL, or XML. Now I've already created an XML from Premiere that I'm going to use for this tutorial. So I'll click on it and click Open. Then I'm going to make sure it's the right timeline. I'm going to rename it to Resolve Tutorial. I'll let it automatically set the project settings and you want to make sure you have this box checked to automatically import source clips into your media pool. I'll go ahead and use the sizing information and since I'm coloring it here myself, I'll uncheck the box for use color information. My timeline resolution is 1920 by 1080 so I'll click OK. And you can see here that it automatically imported my edit from Premiere into Resolve. It also imported the footage I used into my timeline folder. So I'm going to highlight the footage again and move it to my footage folder. Now you have a timeline from Premiere or Final Cut X that you can go ahead and start coloring right away. I can also add to this edit by going back to my media tab and maybe selecting a couple other clips I want to use, drag them into my footage folder and then go back to my edit, double click here, I'll find the in and out points that I want to use and drag it into my timeline. There's a lot of other really cool features in Resolve 14 that I won't go in depth about, 
but if you want to change the speed you can go to change clip speed and you can set the speed so maybe I want to make this 200% speed click change and it'll maintain the timing by making it faster if I click on effects library I can add titles by clicking on titles and then click on text and drag it on top you can then edit the text by highlighting it and going to your inspector window I'll change this to say Iceland and then change the font to Avenir and there we go now we have text on top so once you have everything edited and you're ready to go to color you can click on the color tab the color tab is organized so that you can go from clip to clip really easily and grade as efficiently as possible so right here you see that all of my clips are thumbnails on the bottom with the corresponding timeline underneath this window is my viewer where I can see what I'm grading this window is where you can see all of your nodes or layers of different color corrections this is where you have your open effects library here are my scopes and this is where you can store stills and grades to use on other shots so to get started on a basic grade I'm gonna to go to my first shot and looking at my scopes it looks like it's a little dark so I'm gonna use my color wheels I'll click on gain and bring that up a bit and it looks like my blacks are a little bit lifted above the bottom so I'll go to my lift and bring that down a little bit you can see that I've already made a big difference in the footage I'm gonna right click on this node and change the label and I'm gonna call it primary next I'm gonna right click this node go to add node and add serial this creates another node after where I can do more corrections on this node I'm actually going to apply a LUT that I created by right clicking on it go to 3D LUT and then I'm going to find it in here and use my soft 01 LUTs allow you to apply a preset look that saves you a lot of time and plays in real time finally I'm just going to create one more node after this it looks like this is a little oversaturated so I'm gonna to go to my saturation adjustment and I'm just gonna bring that down a little bit now you can see before and after the saturation adjustment and by clicking option D I can turn all of the nodes off to see what it looked like before and after before and after so you can see that really quickly in resolve I've created a professional looking grade with not a lot of work. Now, if I want to apply that grade to the rest of my shots, I can right click and grab a still from this shot. I'll make this a little bigger so you can see it. And then I'm gonna to go to my next shot. I'm gonna right click on the still and click apply grade. So it looks like this shot was a little brighter. So I'll double click on my primary node, go to my gain and bring it down you can see that I'm not clipping anymore on the top then I'll probably bring my midtones down a little bit to make it a little darker and I'll bring my blacks up so that they're not clipping on the bottom and this is before after before after you can see that my LUT is doing a lot of the work for me by creating a nice stylized grade I'll grab a still from this shot and then I'll go to my next shot and I can apply the grade by clicking here. Another easy way to apply a grade from a previous shot is to simply click the equal sign button. To go to my next shot, I can click the down arrow. I'll click the equal sign again to apply the grade. And I'll go to the down arrow again and click the equal sign. This shot looks like it started off a little more contrasty, so I'm gonna double click on my primary grade again and bring the lift up bring the gain down a little bit and then I'm gonna bring up the gamma to smooth out the midtones so you can see before and after before and after I'll go to my next shot and since I adjusted the last shot a lot I'm actually gonna go back to my first shot right click here and apply the grade from there it still looks a little dark so I'll bring up the primaries it looks a little cool in this shot 
So I'm going to go to my gamma and I'm going to push it towards a warmer tone and put a little green into it too. Finally, I'll go to my last shot and I'm going to apply the grade from my first shot here. So as you can see, I've graded this timeline very quickly and without a whole lot of work by using my LUTs and by applying grades from other shots. Now there's, now there's a lot of other things you can do in the color tab, like creating vignettes by using windows, you can create custom curves, you can qualify different colors to change them to other colors. There's sharpening and softening and a tracker so that you can track windows onto your shot. So I think this shot would do well with a nice vignette. So I'm gonna click Shift S to add a serial node before the first node and I'm going to change the label to vignette. Next I'm going to go to my window tab and I'm going to click on this button to create a circle window. I'll make it a little bigger and I'll soften it and I'm going to make it nice and big to create a really nice soft vignette. And then I'm going to invert the vignette and I'll bring down the offset to make the sides a little bit darker. I'll turn the vignette off in here and I'm going to click command D to turn it on and off. And you can see here that I've quickly created a very soft vignette around the outside. If I want to apply this vignette to other shots, I can simply highlight the vignette, go to command C for copy, and I'll go to this shot, I'll go to my primary node, create a serial node before, and command V to paste the vignette onto this node. I'll do this to my first shot as well. It looks a little extreme in this shot, so I'm gonna to go to my keyer and change my key output to maybe 0.5 to be half the strength as it was before. And so now you can see that this is a little more subtle in this shot. So I'm pretty happy with this grade, so I'm gonna to go to the deliver tab to export my video. You can see I have my timeline down here and I have my thumbnails for each shot right here. This is where I edit my settings. So there are presets for YouTube and Vimeo, um, Final Cut 7, Premiere XML, um, but I'm actually gonna create a custom preset. So I wanna export as ProRes 422 HQ at 1920 by 1080. I'm gonna go to my advanced settings and check force sizing to highest quality and force debayer to highest quality because I'm actually using red footage in this video. Next, I'm gonna go to my audio tab and I'm going to change the bit depth to 24 and I will name this Resolve Tutorial. Next, I want to click Browse to find the location and I'll scroll down to Tutorials, Resolve 14. I'll add a new folder called Exports. Click OK, OK. And make sure I'm rendering my entire timeline as a single clip and click add to render queue. Now that it's in the render queue, I can click start render to render the video. So now my video is exported and I'm pretty happy with it, but I just realized that I want to export in 4K instead of 1920 by 1080. So to do that easily, I'm going to go back to my edit page and if you go to file project settings in your master project settings I'm going to change my timeline resolution to 3840 by 2160 Ultra HD. I'll click save and Resolve will automatically change my timeline resolution while maintaining my clip dimensions. So you can see that all of my clips are still the same size and they're still taking up the same resolution in the timeline. Now I want to re-export the video so I'm going to go to my deliver tab and I'm going to edit the export that I already made by clicking this button here. I'm going to change the resolution to 3840 by 2160 and I'll click update job. Next I'll click on this and I'm going to click start render and then click render to overwrite the previous file. So if I go back to my media tab 
and I navigate to the tutorial folder and my export page, I can see the Resolve Tutorial export right here. And if I click on this button, I can see that it's 3840 by 2160, 23976 frames per second. So our export worked perfectly and now we have an amazing colored video. So I hope you found this video to be really helpful and that you're able to get started right away on your project. Let me know if you have any questions and leave them in the comments and please subscribe so that you can see even more tutorials to help you with your color grading. Thanks guys.